Hey guys, we're halfway through filming season five and we were thinking about all the unbelievable adventures we had up to this point, the amazing support from our sponsors, from our fans, and we thought it'd be a really cool idea to talk about our five most memorable fish up to this point. These are five fish that I've caught. Now we've had some guests on the show over the years that have caught some incredible fish, but those are not in the running for this top five list. All right, let's get started in no particular order because I can't list from one to five. I just can't do it. But we'll start with our first fish here. Quadruple header fishing on the south arm of the Fraser with Jason Tonelli in Vancouver. Yeah, 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 triple, yeah, grab it, triple. go grab it, go grab it. It's quadruple, quadruple, oh, quadruple. I got this one. Set it, set it. We got four on. Yeah, I got them. Oh, I've never had four oh, salmon on. Oh my God. We stacked our downriggers. We had four rods running at the same time and legit all four rods go off. At one point, I had two rods in my hand, fish screaming, we're putting rods back in the rod holder, fighting fish to the boat, releasing them, grabbing the other rods, bringing them into the boat and releasing them. Going out and fishing in Vancouver and having that experience was incredible, especially in a city that means so much to me. Next fish on the list with my good buddy, Gil McKean from Terrace and West Coast Fly Fishing Adventures. We snuck away to Steelhead Boot Camp. These rustic canvas tents in old growth forest. We hooked a lot of fish over a couple days, but the biggest steelhead I ever caught was a chrome bullet right out of the ocean, pushing 20 pounds, a beautiful, beautiful hen. And hooking that fish, on that Islander center pin, that thing was just singing. It was absolutely screaming. There you go. Yep. 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 Woohoo! Beauty. Oh my God, he's big. <laughs> Did you see that fish? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a monster. I'm trying to turn it. Look at like I can't even turn it. <laughs> Come on, dude. This is this might this is. That's, that's pushing the 20. <laughs> like that is. Oh, that is pretty, buddy. The fight was awesome. Just chrome flashes in the water to get that fish to hand and then to watch it swim away was a special moment. Next fish up here. I'd heard so much about jigging for salmon, especially in the Qualicum, Parksville, French Creek area. Talked to the right guys. They got me dialed in and we went out fishing with Brian Roth from BD Diesel and it was uh, another incredible experience. Key thing when you're jigging for salmon that we learned is great electronics. Our Simrad electronics put us on the bait. As soon as we saw that bait, it was dropped down. We were fishing with, uh, this time, five ounce jigs, uh, Mac fish herring aid pattern from Gibbs Delta. And I caught a Taiyi on a jig, the first time ever jigging for salmon. I got a beauty fish on here. Look at him in the water there, so cool. <laughs> Dude, that's a big fish. Oh my God. Get the net, I want to net him in the Oh mission. my goodness, yeah. look at that Quick. thing. Grab that net, Jesus, I can't keep tension on him. I want to net him, just, he's had a really good fight here and just to try and maybe revive him a little bit. All right, that's a, that's a big fish. But when I saw this fish for the first time, and it had been a year or two since I'd caught a Taiyi. So to see this fish in the water, just you and the fish, no flasher, no weights aside from the jig, it was, uh, it was like a kid in a candy store. To bring that fish to hand, revive it at the side of the boat, and watch that huge fish swim away, I mean, there's no better feeling. The next fish up on our list is fishing in Cabo San Lucas and going back to back on 200 plus pound yellowfin tuna. I'm still tired when I think about that trip. Fishing with uh, Rob Alcock from Gibbs Delta. We went down to Cabo and got hooked up with a group down there called Tag Cabo. Die hard fishermen and Hobe our captain is known for catching huge yellowfin tuna. I actually had fought a fish for about 20 minutes and lost it and was heartbroken. Rob hops in the chair, catches a nice tuna. I get back in there, boom, it's on again. And this thing's just smoking line and you know this is a big fish. Well, an hour and 30 minutes later, we get the fish beside the boat. I can't see the fish. They pull this thing into the boat and they, they estimate it to be about 270 pounds. And I was gassed, like exhausted. Rob hops in, big fish. Right away, they throw out live bait, hook another big fish. So they throw me the stand-up belt 
and I'm, I'm back in. Like I literally had 30 minutes in between that first one I caught and I'm back in the saddle and the stand up. And this, this second fish brought me to my knees. I, I literally was down on both knees at the back of the boat with my rod sitting against the gunwale because my back was cramping. I was exhausted. I was exhausted and I couldn't move that fish for a long time. Rob lands his fish, it's over 200 pounds. An hour and 15 minutes later, I finally get that fish to the boat, bring it in, it's about 220 pounds. So two yellowfin tuna, about 270, 220 back to back. I don't think it'll ever be replicated. Boys, I'm retiring from yellowfin tuna fishing. It's official. Last time. Thanks, boys. What <laughs> was the black? <laughs> All right. Here it is. I guess you could call this fish number one if we're gonna label one fish number one. So we're up in Angoon, Alaska, fishing at Whaler's Cove Resort. I got to experience this trip with a, a great buddy of mine and a super passionate angler, Willie Mitchell. So one night we go back after a day of fishing, we have a great dinner and talking to the owner of the lodge. We asked him if he would make a, a special exception and, and allow us to take a couple kayaks out to go see if we could catch a halibut not thinking that we would have a chance to catch one at all, but we just wanted to get back out on the water because we're fishing crazy. We're cruising out there and we're in some pretty good rollers. We're not that far from the lodge, but there's a nice swell coming in. I look over and Willie's probably 100 yards from me and he's hooting and hollering and he's got a, he's got a salmon on the fly rod. I kind of start making my way over towards him to see if he needs any help releasing that fish, but I'm still jigging. And I got a Gibbs Delta Jigaloo on and wouldn't you know it, my rod just folds over I'm like, I got a halibut. Willie's, no way. I'm like, yes, it's on. Oh. You get one? Yep. Yeah! <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that's, yeah, a halibut. Like... that's a halibut, bud. Yeah. Here we go, the rodeo's on. So Willie gets rid of his salmon. We're getting rocked in these swells. We're circling. Well, of course we're not prepared. It was a complete circus, just a gong show. So get the fish up. Willie's almost falling out of his kayak trying to, trying to gaff it. You know, he, he can't get any leverage, but I, I'm not really thinking about that. I'm just thinking, hey, we have a chance to get the fish. So he leans over, kind of hits the halibut, you know, kind of like that, like kind of half-heartedly. And I start giving it to Willie, like, dude, you got to hit that fish. Like, don't give him a love tap. Yeah, I'm going to give him a fucking love tap to him. Get that thing. And he start, so me and him start bantering back and forth. Next thing you know, the fish is right back down in the bottom again. This goes on for another 10 minutes. So finally, we get a gaff in him. Willie's wrestling with that fish, almost, almost dislocates his shoulder. <laughs> and I'm trying to lasso the tail. I got a rope tied up. Finally, get that rope around his tail, get that thing cinched down, and uh, we land the fish. I think it ended up being 47 pounds, this, this beautiful halibut on the jig, in kayaks, teamwork to land this fish. We came walking up that dock like, uh, a couple of roosters with our chest out and feeling pretty good about ourselves after uh, that cool experience. So there's five fish that kind of stick out in my mind, although I could sit here and talk all day about uh, the experiences we've been able to have at the, the different lodges, resorts across BC and other parts of the world. And again, we're just super appreciative of everybody that's gotten behind us. It doesn't happen without our sponsorship and our viewers like you. And we look forward to creating some more exciting content this year and for many more years to come. So stay tuned to Real West Coast. Hopefully we've got some more memorable fish to share with you.